welcome to Healthcare IT Today. I'm John Lynn, together with my colleague and friend, Colin Hung. The world of technology and healthcare are ever-changing in new and novel ways, and that's why we love this stuff. So join us as we discuss the latest healthcare and health IT news, meshed together in new ways which help generate ideas and new perspectives. Plus, we'll have a little fun along the way. In today's episode, we'll be previewing the upcoming HIMSS 2023 conference. And be sure to follow the show on social media at the hashtag HITSM and our personal accounts at TechGuy and at Colin underscore Hung. Plus, check out our 17 years of health IT blog content at healthcareittoday.com. How many hems have you been to, Colin? Or, or have you lost count because you're too old for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to lose count. Uh, I think this will be my 15th. Yeah. Well, it depends how you count the COVID years, right? Like for right. me, I, I think I went to my first one 14 years ago. So does that make 13 or something like that? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's the granddaddy, right? Of, of, of shows, at least in terms of the ones I've been to. And uh, so it holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> well, it was the first conference I actually went to. So for me, you're, you're right. Like I have the same thing and I was invited to be on a blogger panel at the very first one, 14 years ago when no one knew what a blog was and they had these two blogger panels. And I remember that one of the questions was how many of you are actually full-time bloggers? <laughs> <laughs> and I was sitting there, I was like, it's funny you say that because when I get home, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> so sure enough, it started it all. <laughs> I just, I just remember the first time going to hymns and not, you know, I was with a small company at the time. And so I just had no idea that the industry was so big and so varied and just seeing all of the vendors and all of the booths and, you know, just all the nuances of the different digital health companies. I, I was, I was floored. I didn't realize the industry was that big and that mature and uh anyway it was eye-opening <laughs> very eye-opening I, I think it took me to my third one to actually realize what was going on <laughs> like at the first <laughs> one i was so overwhelmed by it i mean i remember i held the first new media meetup at that one and i was just grateful anyone showed up because what was i doing organizing an event because <laughs> i didn't really know anyone i didn't understand the industry i remember some of the early meetings at the hymns that i went to i think it was my second or third one i was sitting in a booth with, with this one vendor and they were you know i come from an ambulatory side i didn't know the hospital side at the time really at all like i was so ignorant to all the hospital side of things and you know those vendors were so generous with me and educated me on the hospital side because i was clueless <laughs> oh man so john let me ask you this first question what topics do you think we're going to be talking about or people will be talking about at hymns 23 that maybe aren't talked about at vive 2023 yeah well and it's worth noting that uh, a lot of the same topics are going to be talked about right so exactly. go check out our vive episode to find out what will be talked about at hymns too right i mean the employee burnout right uh, revenue that we talked about all of those things AI, of course, will still be a topic. I mean, you know, those are the three. In fact, I actually think AI is going to be way more sexy than even the other two topics as far as what people are going to want to talk about uh, rather than what they're going to complain about, right? <laughs> Maybe there's a subtle difference of what are they going to talk about and what are they going to complain about. But uh, I think the difference for me in Hymns and Vive is going to be some of the more practical topics that are going to be talked about at Hymns because at Vive, you're going to have more of the CIOs that are talking more of the strategy and budgeting and employee and staff and, you know, the higher level things. And, you know, of course, because Vive has Chime, that's why they have the CIOs, but they also have the health side. So there will be more investors. There'll be a little, more, a little bit more retail health, although I think HIMSS has done some efforts to bring some of those conversations in as well. But then you're going to get lots of the other topics like security, right? Like, Sure, security from a CIO perspective is going to happen at Vive, but at HIMSS, you're going to have the actual CISOs there that want to talk about how am I going to actually do this and how do I do this on a limited budget and, and how am I going to, you know, what technology should I use for this? And then I guess the other one I'd throw out there is there's a lot of partnerships that are going to happen at Hims as well. Uh, you know, it's still a bit larger than than Vive in that regard. So for those companies, which there's a lot of them that work with a bunch of partners, there's going to be a lot of those partner meetings that are going to happen there. You know, at Hims, and so those types of discussions are obviously you know have always been a trademark of Hims and will be this year too. 
Yeah, I totally, totally agree. I think it's hard to get away from the topic of the employee challenge. Uh, it's going to be hard to get away from the topic of the economy, right? And and the impact it has on revenues. Uh, but I, I agree with you that we're going to have much more practical discussions at HIMSS around implementing cybersecurity and implementing, you know, cloud and, and some of those uh, things because the VPs are there, right? Because the managers are there, not just the CIOs, which typically is where uh, what happens at Vive. The one thing I think is going to be talked about, though, at HIMSS uh, that won't be talked about at Vive just because of the variety of attendees is uh, what impact AI is going to have on jobs in IT. And I don't mean chat GPT uh, necessarily, but I do mean like the day is coming when uh, simple coding is going to be generated from an AI. What does that mean for IT departments in healthcare? Does that mean they're going to be even more productive because they weren't able to keep these people employed in the first place? Or does this mean all of a sudden that there's going to be a scaling back in employees uh, in IT because you can you can depend on AI to do more stuff for you than before? So it's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be a topic of discussion. I don't think there's going to be any conclusions, but certainly I'm picking up a lot of vibes um, in vibes. Sorry, in terms of people wanting to talk about the impact that generative AI is going to have on actual job roles. Yeah, no, that's interesting, and you know, I think a lot of people at Hims like to hear the federal stuff, and and the federal government has often announced a lot of things there. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out, right? Uh, and, and another thing that I think is always interesting is it seems like the uh, different MRAM models, and you know, I know Hims is launching a few new ones, and they're working on some others as well. So you know, I think those type of discussions are really interesting too, when it comes to like the maturity of EMR adoption, right. And now pushing it more towards digital health and digital transformation. And some of those practical, like, what have you implemented? What do you need to implement? Uh, I think those are going to be some interesting discussions that happen there along with the whole policy one. Cause I, I think the federal government, at least from my experience in the past, and we'll see how Vive is this year, uh, you know, they have a bigger presence at HIMSS than they do at Vive. So that whole policy thing is really interesting. And the question is, are they holding out some new policies for them to announce at HIMSS? Uh, You know, that one I can't predict because I don't believe in predicting government. That's like uh, (laughs) impossible predictions, but I'll be watching to see if they do. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see what the ONC is going to come out with or HHS uh, at HIMSS, which you're right, typically is where they announce stuff. So so I guess on in that vein or in that spirit, John, are there any particular stories that you're on the hunt for while at HIMSS 23? Yeah, you know, it's the number one question that I get, right? As, as someone who covers HIMSS, hey, what do you want to write about? And, uh, you know, what's interesting for me is I take a very different approach than I think maybe a lot of other journalists there. And I'm trying to discover what the story is. So, you know, my favorite question when someone asks that is like, tell me something I don't know, which to be fair is a high bar since we live, eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff, right? Like it's, it's kind of hard to shock us with something, but that's what I look for the most is like, Ooh, I never heard of that. You know, like that's really interesting that they applied AI that way or that they, you know, merge these two systems or technologies or interoperability together with the large language model to be able to, you know, whatever, right? Like it's the crossover of those technologies. It's like, wow, that makes a lot of sense and i just didn't expect that so right i'd say that's how i approach it it's interesting i i guess i'm more of a traditionalist uh in my <laughs> approach to him so i i go in with one or two kind of topic areas that i'm interested in hearing stories about and then like you i, I do leave it open to discover something or to to maybe get a, a sense of maybe a, a trend that's happening that i didn't know was happening but for me this year uh, i'm definitely going to put a focus on finding out some stories about patient experience because I, I, you know, A, I'm a fan, but B, I also don't, I also think that it needs more attention. And there's some pretty innovative things happening in that sort of digital front door and the, and the patient transfer space. So I'm interested in finding out more stories around that. Um, And certainly HIMSS is a great place to kind of see what the latest technologies are in, in that world, in the patient experience world. I'm I'm also interested in seeing what's new in terms of trends in cybersecurity. Uh, I'm not a cybersecurity guy, but I'm interested to see, you know, how AI is being applied to threat analytics, right? And and all this new uh, approaches in terms of uh, IoT defense and uh, you know and how that is impacting cybersecurity. So I'm kind of curious to see what cybersecurity t- topics 
are going to be talked about. And I'm looking for some stories, some interesting approaches in, in those two areas. Yeah. I think that's interesting. Uh, and obviously you love the patient experience because you're just a, a good human that loves patients as well. <laughs> so you know, it'll be interesting to see how many patients are there, right? And how much they embrace the patient voice and, and things like that. Uh, you know, I haven't looked through to see how much there is, uh, but that, that's always interesting as well. You know, how many patients are going to be there sharing their perspectives and their experience. Uh, I think that would be fun to watch. Uh, you know, I, if I were to, you know, look into my crystal ball, what are the stories that are going to stand out. I think it's going to be the AI ones for me. Um, and maybe I'm just the tech guy, right? I mean, I'm, I'm the nerd, <laughs> right? Like that loves all that technology. And so the AI ones that can reduce the administrative burden and can, you know, increase the revenue. I think those are going to be probably the most interesting to me, but I also love to see the evolution and the practical solutions, right? Like, I mean, I, I think about uh, an interview I did with uh, Harmony Healthcare IT and a CIO and, and, you know, you know, and they, they went and they got rid of these legacy systems and it's like, that's overhead that's killing organizations from a financial perspective and from like, I have to deal with all these legacy systems rather than, than implementing the new AI, right? And so, you know, implementing a solution like that is actually a really great story because it enables you to do AI if you get rid of those legacy systems and then you don't have to manage them. Uh, another example of that, I think of Interlace Health, right? And they had a CIO talk to us uh, in the past about like, they have a thousand forms. It's like, <laughs> Really? I, d I just, you know, like you hear that and you're like, wow, I mean, it makes sense as they start going through it. And you're like, oh, yeah, there there are a lot of forms in this and, <laughs> and you need them. Right. But like how you manage that and everything. Again, it's one of those administrative overhead burdens that's, you know, if you streamline onto a platform like Interlace Health, you can, you know, really make an impact on those users and improve the experience for both patients and your staff. So there's always those little things where you're like, Oh yeah, I forgot. That's a really big deal. And you know that, and when you address it, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Like one of the stories um, that I'm also looking for, it, it's, it's so plumbing, John, you're going to be surprised. Like, but, but over the last year, I've been hearing a lot about, you know, the fact that hospitals are really looking and health systems are looking really to reduce the number of vendors that they're dealing with, right? They want to take a thousand vendors down to 500. And similar to what you just said, it's overhead, right? Managing a thousand relationships is much harder than managing 500. And so, you know, the, to me, there's been an active movement to try and cut down where it makes sense, right? Like to, to consolidate into a single vendor from two or from five down to two and, and so forth. And, you know, this is something that I've been hearing from from some of the companies I've been working with, companies like Kairos and, and Ovalon and others, they're just, they're see, feeling and seeing the same thing. I'm looking for stories that verify this and, and, and kind of behind the scenes to understand why, what is the criteria? Who are they looking for? Who are they consolidating to? Is it the upstart innovator or is it the tried and true, low risk, right? But low innovation type company. So I'm interested in seeing wh whether or not there's any truth to that consolidation uh, and or whether that is a consistent trend. Well, it's harder to do than hey. it looks, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that That's the problem with it, right? Is, uh, you know, it's great to consolidate. Everyone wants to do it, but, you know, people fall in love with the technologies they have. So I think that's that's one of the challenges. But to your point, the other thing to watch is the consolidation of vendors, which allows mm -hmm. the other companies to say, oh, I can just go with them because they now offer these 10 services. It pays to be the, the bigger fish in the pond, gobbling up the smaller ones for sure. <laughs> hey, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Healthcare IT Today with John Lynn and Colin Hahn. Today, we are previewing HIMSS 2023 conference that's happening in Chicago. John, I got to ask you this one. It's a perennial question ahead of any conference, but what are you looking forward to the most at HIMSS 23? Yeah, I think in our last preview, I, I said people, which is still true, right? <laughs> like, it's always people because, you know, and, and maybe that's why people is so great. You don't know what to expect, right? But you know, you're going to get something that, you know, has been thoughtfully produced and put together, right? So, you know, anyway, people's the best. But going beyond that, you know, and specifically to this HIMSS conference, there's a couple of things that, you know, one I'll throw out there. Uh, in fact, the two keynotes that I'm kind of keeping my eye on is first is the responsible AI one that talks about patient safety, privacy, and even the ethics of AI. There's, there's so much to chew on there. I'm a little in interested, like, 
can the keynote really dive into this in a, in a deep way, or is it going to just be high level? That would be disappointing if it stays high level or whether they really dive into some of the details. Cause the, there are some really complicated things that need to be discussed. So I hope they do dive into the details there and, and, and really flesh out like, Oh yeah. I hadn't thought about that could be an issue. Right. So I'm excited to see if, how that one goes. And then, the other keynote that, you know, for me, uh, and I think for a lot of people is Damar Hamlin, like the, the NFL player, obviously, that, uh, you know, nearly died on the field, right? And, uh, you know, hearing what he says about that, it, it's a feel-good story. I'm not sure it's a health IT story, but I love those kind of stories. And I love hearing the first person experience of that story and the experience of, of the healthcare system at the highest level, right? Like Damar got the very best of what healthcare could offer in that town. I think it was Cleveland, right? If I remember yep. like, and it's like, he got whatever was the best. Cause you know, for sure they knew that he needed whatever. And what was that experience like? Maybe there's a, a, something there for us to understand that we could apply to other patients. I hope so. I mean, it's definitely going to be an interesting story. I'm looking forward to that one as well. Uh, for me, I'm actually looking forward to a couple of things. For me, Hims is always about the exhibit hall. I, you know, I've loved the exhibit hall. Uh, that's where we met on the exhibit hall. But yep. the exhibit hall for me is where the action is at Hims. And there are a couple of areas. Um, you know, Hims is is going more with this pavilion style approach, right, to the exhibit hall, where it's not just random uh, booths anymore. There's certain areas where you can go. So one of the ones I'm looking forward to actually exploring, because uh, I haven't been there for a while, is the interoperability uh, showcase. I'm interested to see uh, whether or not there's been any meaningful progress made or, or whether we're still at the stage of just showing off that we can move data from one app to another, right? I've heard some rumors that this year there's a different approach to this interoperability showcase. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen there, what companies are there and what they'll be showcasing, what are the use cases, especially uh, obviously with the lens of, you know, what's happening with Tefka and, and the QHINs and everything. Like I'm kind of interested to see all this stuff. To, so I'm going to go check that one out. The other one I'm interested in is the um, patient patient engagement 365 pavilion. Mm. Of course, it's patient engagement. I'm kind of curious of to see what they're going to be showcasing <laughs> there. Uh, I'm interested to see what companies are going to be there. And, and hopefully there's going to be a few innovators uh, in that pavilion as well. Yeah, I am not looking forward to the interrupt pavilion. I haven't enjoyed it for a number of years and I still won't. And maybe it's because I've been to, you know, two or three other interrupt conferences and events. So maybe I got my fill already. I don't know. Maybe it's unique for other people that are attending. Uh, but I, you're right. I do love the pavilions, uh, the federal health pavilion. Like I mentioned, having, you know, if you want to get answers from the frontline people, people, the Federal Health Pavilion is a great place to go to go get those answers. So if you're dealing with some MIPS stuff, you're dealing with some HCAPs, you're dealing, you know, whatever, right? Like that, that you know, you want to understand that the HIPAA privacy, you know, how is, uh, you know, the, you know, you know, promoting interoperability or even the, you know, information blocking, how is it going to be done and get your questions answered? I love that Federal Health Pavilion. You can go there, you can meet them. And if they don't know, they're really helpful and like, let me connect you to the right person. So I think that's a just a great asset to have at a conference like that. The other one that I'm torn, but I want to see what it's like is the innovation hub. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a high bar to put innovation hub on it. So, you know, and again, we we're so steeped in this, you know, will we feel like it's innovation, but maybe someone who, you know, isn't living, eating, breathing, sleeping, this will find it more innovative than us, but I'm interested to see, you know, how are they going to put, what are they going to put in there? Who's in there? What companies are in there? What innovations? So, you know, I'll go take a look and see, you know, is, is it innovative or is this kind of the, the, the stuff we're already heard about? And, you know, we're just already innovative enough at healthcare IT today. I don't, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. The innovation hub looks pretty interesting, right? It's, is it, a, it, they say it's going to be a combination of disruptive companies as well as incubators and accelerators and things. So that should be exciting. The startup park inside the innovation hub is something I definitely want to check out and see what, what those little startups for, because before, you know, you'd have to go to the back of the hall, right? They, they all, they all had the little 10 by 10 booths at the back of the hall. Um, now they'll have a kiosk, uh, presumably in some of these, um, um, some of the, in the hub there and a little bit more affordable, which means even smaller companies might be able to come to him. And I mean, I'm curious to see what innovative uh, solutions are going to be available, especially, and then also the reception of those solutions to this audience. Because mm. we, as we know, this is more of an enterprise purchasing audience, right? A little bit more conservative. So I'm, I'm interested to see not only the companies that are there, but the reaction to them. So I'm looking forward to that. 
Yeah. And I'll just throw this out. Uh, the Hypnic Awards, our, our healthcare marketing awards is going to be given out on the Sunday, right at the beginning of HIMSS as we kind of kick off the executive summit, which I'm also interested in seeing how their executive summit goes. But, you know, <laughs> thanks to HIMSS for, uh, you know, helping us out and giving us a place to give out the Hypnic uh, Healthcare Marketing Awards uh, that Medigy sponsors. So, you know, Sunday afternoon, we'll be kicking it off with the uh, Hypnic community, the healthcare marketing community, which will be a lot of fun as well. Absolutely. It's going to be tons of fun to do that at, at the big show like that because a lot of our a lot of the members of the hitman community are, are actually there so yep. of course it's going to be great of course got to talk a little bit about chicago john like this is the first time we're back in chicago in a long time right hims has not been in chicago for a while so what what are you looking forward to and what recommendations do you have for being in that big city well, I think you should answer more than me because you've been there a lot more. But uh, the thing that I, you know, the thing to remember is McCormick is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> 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 so if you've never been, realize McCormick is far away, but here's a little hack for you. Uh, you can hop on any of the buses to the, the hotels that are downtown, you, you know, get on those shuttles and they'll, they'll take you right there. And the buses have a secret back lane that often goes faster, even when there's traffic. So, you know, the bus is often faster than even if Uber or Lyft taxi. So, you know, there's a little back, uh, you know, yep. insight, you hop on one of those, take it to, you know, because the real fun in the evening, which, you know, we, we obviously like to highlight as well, is going to happen in that kind of, you know, in that loop area, right, by the river. And so, you know, hop on one of those buses, get to one of the hotels, and then you can walk around from there and, and see a lot of cool places. Uh, so, you know, that that's uh, one little hint. To, obviously, it's Chicago, so it has every food imaginable. You know, that's the other good part with Chicago. You choose your favorite type of food. I, I haven't been to many bad, I'm trying to think if I've been to any bad restaurants. They've all been good in Chicago because they have such a variety. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I totally with you on that whole bus hack, right? Like take the bus, if you're having dinner or anything downtown, just take any of the buses, that's, any of the routes to the hotels, get off at the first one and then make your way from there. Or get an Uber from there because it'll be much faster than waiting at the the Hymns roundabout. Um, the other one um, is for if you're flying in, don't be afraid to take the subway. Um, it's actually pretty fast. Like you said, that there's a dedicated, obviously, subway track that goes from O'Hare downtown. It's actually pretty quick. And especially if you're arriving during rush hour, it's faster than any Uber ride and much, much less hassle. You'll be less stressed by the time you arrive if you take the subway. So that's another trick. But yeah, for me, being in Chicago, it's all about the food. Um, it's it's all about, you know, checking out, getting a, getting a pie, right? For me, I got to go to Giordano's, get a pie or Pizza Uno or or Gino's East. Any of those places is just wonderful. Uh, you got to get some, uh, you got to get some popcorn, right? Chicago oh, makes popcorn yeah, while you're there so from good. Garrett's. Right? Someone's got to give that out. That's so good. For sure. that, that, there's got to be someone that, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just whoever and and if you if you are if you're listening to this and you're giving it away, let us know because John and I we'll will tweet show it up. Out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tweet it out. We're big fans of Chicago mix. <laughs> but you know those two in particular, it's sort of the must-haves in Chicago. And then just I think also you know because it's central, um, you know centrally located, it's in a hub city like like uh, Chicago. I think I'm also interested in seeing some of the people who haven't come to the last few hymns. Hmm. Um, so I think Chicago, I think will be will be more of a place where you know people will come together. So yeah, looking forward to a lot of the stuff happening uh, in the city. Yeah, you know the other thing I want to do is uh, you you know that my son is actually coming to hymns, which uh, that's a bit of an adventure for me. Uh, yeah, he's finally old <laughs> enough to come and, and join us. He's going to be helping out with our video production and stuff, so it's going to be fun to have my son there. Of course, I can't take him to any of the parties. He needs to go and do his schoolwork for college. But you know, he'll, he'll be off. He'll have to miss the parties. But I, I want to take him to the Bean, right? Like it's just it's such yeah. a touristy thing to do. But he even said it too. He said. God, how, where's the bean? Can we go? It's a, that's one thing I love. I'm looking forward to. I want to take my son, go get a picture in the bean, right? Like check it out and take him there, have that experience, create that memory with him. So that, that's something else. Uh, you know, it's not too far from the, the midtown area where all the parties are. You can slip over there, grab a picture, you know, it, it's worth it. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty cool. It's such a unique memory and just, it reminds you of Chicago and that experience. So I'm looking forward to doing that with my son. Yeah, it's always fun. And hey, we got always a bit of a little shout out to say we always look forward to having the uh, photo, photo, right? The the Hitmake HIT as Sam HCLDR Pink Socks, whatever. Just come and have a photo with us. We're going to hold it actually at our booth this year. Um, 
which is uh, in the hymns show floor. So come to our booth. We're going to do a photo. We'll announce it on social media and we'll look forward to seeing all of you there. Yep. Hey, awesome. thanks to all of you who tuned into this episode of Healthcare IT Today. To find out more details about our show, check out the programs page on healthcarenowradio.com. And please share your voice and engage with the community at healthcareittoday.com and on social media using the hashtag HITSM. I'm Colin Hung with my friend and health IT collaborator, John Lin. Thanks for listening and have a great week.